So hi, welcome to Grown Eyes Podcast. I'm Shane. I'm Glory. And we're here with... Lexi from Space. And we're some questions to say about the upcoming album. This is all we ever get. So congrats on that, by the way. How do you feel about the response to the announcement so far? Um, Really good. Uh, it's been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, I'm really excited for it to finally be out. Nervous, because it's been so long since we like have written and recorded it. <laughs> but... I am really excited to, for it to just be out there and for everybody to like finally get to hear it. Hell yeah, the album fucking uh-huh. rocks. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. How long have you been sitting on this record? Um, so we like wrote most of it this time last year, and then okay. we recorded it in May of last year. Okay. Okay. I was thinking like a couple years. I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, if it was a couple years, I would be manic. <laughs> yeah. No, rightfully so. <laughs> rightfully so. Uh, so is there any meaning behind the album title or cover art? So um, as far as the cover art goes, uh, our one guitarist, Donnie, is uh, he is just like a really good eye for like really cool visuals and stuff like that. He does a lot of our merch designs and stuff like that. Um. So he just like had this artist that he followed and he was like, hey, what if what about this for like the album art? And we just were like, yeah, that sounds that looks like something that we would use and like kind of follows the theme of like the psychedelic and like imagery that we're always using. Mm-hmm. Um, And the title is we just picked lyrics that sounded cool. Mm-hmm. But then it also kind of ended up being like something that encapsulates what the album is about. Mm-hmm. Um, So it kind of like fell into place that it has like a little bit of a deeper meaning but originally it was just like hey this sounds cool let's use this <laughs> All right, fair enough. Oh, okay makes sense um so can you tell us a little bit about your writing process for the album um the guys take care of like all the instrumental stuff mm-hmm. um a lot of the time like we'll just they'll just like send random like voice memos and stuff like that of them playing like a riff or something being like hey here's something that might be cool for the future and like re- maybe a song that we'll put out in, in a bit yeah. and they just do that. And I just listen, I go, yep, that's cool. I like it. <laughs> and so a lot of the time the like instrumental and like that part of the writing process is done by them. And then I just kind of like listen back and I'm like, Oh, this is really cool. Like I like it. A lot of the times I don't have any like bad critiques. I really like most of the things that they do, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. That's good. Um, And then as far as like lyrics go, it's a huge collaborative effort um, because this is my first band. So for like the demo and like space jams, a lot of it was like Donnie and like me working on it together. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And with this album, it's been really cool because it's not just Donnie and I like John, our bassist has written some lyrics and like uh, our drummer, Dan, he like wrote all of landslide. He just like randomly one night. So it's like sure. really cool that we can just like, depend on each other and like trust each other with these like ideas and like the writing process is really cool because it's just so collaborative yeah that's awesome and do you feel like as a vocalist do you feel any sort of disconnect to the lyrics if it's not words that you necessarily wrote not really just because the guy like john joe dan and donnie like they're my best friends Mm -hmm. um and they like they really understand a lot of like the same things that i would most likely write about Mm -hmm. so i trust them with that kind of stuff and even if it is something that i'm like oh i wouldn't say this i would tell them and they'd be like okay well what about this instead or like what do you think you should do like say instead Mm -hmm. so i don't get like really weirded out by that Mm -hmm. if anything it's kind of like comforting to know that they're like speaking things that i would say too yeah, yeah, that's awesome. All right. That's, that's that's amazing. They know your voice. That's that's mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And like as like a queer, like non man with like a band full of men that like yeah. get it, it's like super comfortable. Yeah, Hell absolutely. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Uh, so what song off this album took longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? <sighs> um longest to write. I think the one that took the longest is song two i'm like so bad at actually remembering the names of it because for the longest time it was like song two song three yeah Um, i'm pulling up the track list yeah i'm working on it (laughs) (laughs) um big picture i think that one took the longest um just because there was like some like random like spots that like didn't have any lyrics at all 
Um, And then when we got into the studio, I remember doing that song and it was just me and John in there one day. Mm-hmm. And for like half an hour, we were just like singing and like saying these like lines to each other being like, oh, what about this one? Or like, what about this one instead? So it took like longer than most of them. Mm-hmm. Um, And then you said, which one is my favorite? Yes. That's hard to choose. Um, <laughs> I like, I really love the B side of the album. I love all the songs, but like, honestly, a lot of the time, my like favorite changes. I think Running Man is my favorite. I feel like that was the one that, like, right from the get go, I was like, yeah, this is a banger. Like, this yeah. is the cool one. This is the one that I can like picture people singing along to with me. Mm-hmm. All right. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, so, how'd the track list for the album come about? Did you guys write the opener, be the opener, close, be a closer, shuffle around and see what fits? What was that process like? Um, I think the way that it worked is like, we just wrote songs. Mm -hmm. And then when it came to like Rev asking us, okay, what is the track listing? We were like, shit. Okay. And so (laughs) like, we kind of just like messed around with like, what should be the opener? What should be like the ending? Where, what goes where? I know that we wanted like AITB, um, to be in the middle specifically for like with the vinyl. So that way it ends on the end of a, like side A and goes into side b so like we knew for sure that that's where that was going Mm -hmm. and then i think next was like okay landslide we want that to be number one just because it's such like this like heavy song that like packs a punch immediately Mm -hmm. and also was like the one that we wanted to be the single and running man is the last song and i think we just kind of put it there but when i listened to like the whole album all the way through i'm like this is such a good like last song yeah. Like, I feel like it, like, ends the album on such a good note. Absolutely. Yeah. So it was purely, like, just, like, vibes, basically. Yeah. A lot of the things that we do is based off of vibes. <laughs> that's that's a enough. fair way to go. That, that's fair yeah. enough. Um, we'd like to go back to what you were saying about Big Picture, how that was, like, written, at least the lyrics were written in the studio. Is there any sort of added pressure for you, like, going into the studio not 100% sure what you're going to say on a song and having to kind of come up with it on the spot? um sometimes it does but a lot of the time i like i think going into this record i was a bit nervous because we worked with jay zabricki and all of the guys had worked with them prior with like different bands that they've been in and this was my first time working with him like he's one of my very good friends so i like felt comfortable around him but i wasn't sure what the like process of recording an album would be like with him Mm -hmm. so i was a bit nervous because he's like he has a great resume like his resume of like bands that he's like worked with is like very cool and like intimidating almost yeah i was like ah shit like we don't have some lyrics and he's like that's fine like bands come in here sometimes without even pre-production like you're okay and i'm like okay so he was like really cool about it like when we were doing big picture like he was just chilling and he was even like being like okay what if you did this instead Mm -hmm. so like he would help with like the writing process if we needed it that's Which good. is really awesome because, like, he is one of our good friends and just, like, super talented and, like, has worked with so many really awesome bands, like, Every Time I Die and, like, Terror. Yeah. So just to have him, like, there to, like, support us was awesome. Yeah. And to, awesome. to have someone like that co-signing on your career has got to it's gotta feel good because yeah. those, those bands you listed off, Jesus. Oh, uh, yeah, nice dude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So would you be able to tell us where your headspace is at while you're creating this record? Um, I feel like a lot of the time our headspace it's always positive. Like okay. That's good. Uh, like as far as like hardcore goes, like being positive is like when you're like creating positive songs is like my favorite type of hardcore, like youth crew and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Like that is what I'm drawn to. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm always like thinking positively and like I want things to be like bouncy and like cool. And like, we always say like, we got to make sure that there's enough for the two steppers because the kids love the two step. (laughs) So like, we always keep that in mind. Yeah. It's so easy to do. Like everybody's involved. Um, (laughs) So with that, like the positivity, like we always make sure that like that is like number one, but like sometimes our lyrics aren't extremely positive. Like a lot of the time we're talking about like people who are looking down upon us and stuff like that. So, like, a lot, our, like, biggest message that I feel like we encapsulate in almost every one of our songs is being like, hey, I don't care what you think about me because I am happy with who I am. I'm proud of who I am. So, fuck you. <laughs> like, that kind of vibe. Damn yeah. right. Hell yeah. Yeah. 
glad glad to see like you guys are channeling that positivity no matter what um because you know there's so much heavy music where there is no positivity like i feel like Gloria mm-hmm. asked me a question one time like we were arguing about positive metalcore and she's like name one band you listen to that's actually positive <laughs> and i couldn't i couldn't so yeah. i'm glad i'm glad that there's positive heavy music because we need more yeah. of it like i love i love a good like very angry and like negative song and shit like that mm-hmm. especially in like metalcore but like I am like I'm someone who, where if like negativities are all around me, I just like spiral. So yeah. like yeah. I like to be a very positive person and like bring that energy. Yeah, exactly. Hell we yeah. need that energy. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so how do you recommend your fans to listen to this album for the first time? Should I do it in the car with friends and talk with headphones on? Is it workout album, party album? What do you personally recommend? Oh, that is a good one. I feel like. I personally like I love to sit like the first time I listen to an album I like to do it on my own but that's just me (laughs) it could be like something that you listen with your friends and you're like driving somewhere because like that's also really cool when you're like listening to an album and like you and your friends love it and you're like oh this part's so sick or like this riff goes crazy like Mm -hmm. it's fun to like do that and like a lot of the times like I have a very specific memory of me and Donnie going to a show together and our friend Owen, who's in this band, Selfish Act from Buffalo, he came with us and we were talking about the album. We we're like, let's show you some songs. And like, as we were listening to it, me and Tyler were like, yo, this part is so cool. Like, yeah. so like, I want people to have that experience too when they're listening to it. So like, yeah, listening to it with friends would be a really cool experience. But also if you're someone like me and you like need to take it in first before you show it to other people or like talk about it with other people, that's mm-hmm. also a really good way. I like the party idea because mm-hmm. it is sure. it's got good energy you know mm-hmm. Hell yeah. absolutely oh yeah. yeah so this one should be super super quick off the top of your head i want you to describe this album for new listeners in three words no more no less oh i want to say like expressive mm-hmm. bold mm-hmm. and loud Ooh. All right. those are solid yeah. words yeah. Um, so in that same train of thought is there a certain feeling or emotion you want listeners to have going through the album um I want them to think about like a time where someone told them they couldn't do something but they knew that they could do it mm-hmm. like someone was like definitely trying to put you down but you were like you know what no I am going to do this yeah Maintaining fuck that yeah. positive vibes. Hell yeah. 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 Like vibes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Was that something that was kind of like you guys were talking about while you were creating the record? Kind of that, fuck you, I'm going to do it anyways vibe. Yeah. Actually, like a lot of the time, um, because we're like this band, like a hardcore band that kind of like fits into this space where we can be like the heaviest band on a bill or we can be the lightest band on a bill. Mm-hmm. Like we can play with like, more melodic bands or we could play with like super heavy bands um when we play with like the more melodic and non-traditional hardcore bands and like pop punk bands like i feel like a lot of people don't take us as seriously as a hardcore Mm -hmm. band they're like oh well they're playing with all those bands like they aren't really hardcore yeah and like that was a huge reason why we wanted to sign with revelation because like we are a hardcore band like we love hardcore and like revelation records has like some of the coolest records and like has signed some of the my favorite bands and like a lot of our favorite bands like we are a hardcore band and like fuck you if you don't think that because yeah we are and we the people who do believe in us are the people that matter exactly fuck everyone else man yeah Yeah. and i i also respect bands like you guys that understand that as a hardcore band you can still play with the bands outside of hardcore and like keep growing the scene because that's how that's how people get into all these different bands and you become a gateway band of of sorts exactly Um, exactly like that tour that we just did with military gun we were the only hardcore band on it yeah Mm -hmm. and like while military gun like at its core is a hardcore band like pool kids and spiritual cramp aren't really that Mm -hmm. but like the people who were coming to the shows were like oh a hardcore band like yes this is awesome or like exactly weren't into it at first we're like this is really cool like i had a bunch of people at the end of it the night being like this is my first time seeing a hardcore band Mm -hmm. and i was like hell yeah dude like go home and start like looking up different bands and like if you like it go to a show and then you can like go to more like local shows and be part of your local scene and like start from there Mm -hmm. exactly oh yeah damn right damn right yeah 
So for this question, why don't you picture you're on tour, you're at a gas station for a rest stop. What is your snack of choice? Okay. Uh, can I pick two? Just Go because right ahead. Like, I have to have yeah. a salty and a sweet. Go right ahead. Um, most of the time when it comes to like getting a salty snack, I have to get like some sort of chips. Um, I think I hate getting these because like everybody in the van will be like, these are a stinky chip. I love Cool Ranch Doritos. <gasps> those are amazing. I don't know if they are good, with a stinky but they chip. are stinky. Like they stink up the van. <laughs> and <laughs> I've never so, been in a closed van with multiple people before. Yeah. So they could be stinky yeah. in, that, yeah. in that context. Or I really like dill pickle chips, like Lay's dill pickle chips. So Damn good. Right. So yeah, yeah, I was fucking some of those up right last now. night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love a good stinky chip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, stinky the better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like one of those two. Mm-hmm. And as far as like a sweet goes, mm-hmm. probably just like Reese's cups. Yeah, because nice. like you get the little you get some protein in it. You get a little kick of energy. Like if you're not trying to like chug a Red Bull, like I usually will go for like Reese's cups and like a Gatorade just to like yeah. give me something. Yeah. Hell yeah. Exactly. All right. Hell yeah. And on the topic of food, if the band was a dish, what dish would the band be and why? Mm. OK, we all love Mexican food, so it has to be something like that. Honestly, mm. probably a burrito like because like. I'm vegetarian. John and Joe are vegan. And then Dan and Donnie, they eat meat. So like a burrito is something that you can make vegan or vegetarian, but it's also mm-hmm. something that can have meat in it. And like, who doesn't love a burrito? Hello? True. Yeah. It's exactly. got everything you need in it. All right. Exactly. It's a crowd yeah. pleaser. I yes. agree. <laughs> um, so for the last couple of questions, it's going to shift completely away from music and go straight to death row. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Okay. Um, I think I would go with like a falafel wrap. Like a really good falafel wrap that has like all of the yummy veggies in it. It has some like pickled red onions, some banana peppers, some lettuce, Mm -hmm. um, some like garlic, like sauce of sorts, maybe dill, and then some hot sauce or like a chili sauce with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Night, yeah. wrapped in a nice warm pita All right. and then Shit. a coca-cola for my drink oh my god crispy Damn. refreshing all Damn. right yes. oh my god that is like the best meal ever you're, yes. you're on to something there yeah. you're on to something yeah hell yeah uh and if you could live in one fictional world for a week where would you live um probably like the pokemon universe mm-hmm like, I would have so much fun just hanging out with so many different, like, Pokemon and stuff like that. I know, like, if you really think about it, it probably is dangerous. But, like, Ash Ketchum is 12 years old wandering the world by himself. I should be okay. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. yeah. As long as I, like, catch one cute little Pokemon to, like, take care of me, I would be fine. Exactly. Damn right. All right. Damn right. Um, and I've not have asked the last question. Every single person that we've spoken to have said that it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Pink. Hell yeah. I was not expecting. I was expecting purple. Yeah, based yeah. on hair. Yeah. Pink and purple are like my two favorites, but pink is my all-time favorite. Gotcha. All right. All right Sounds good. Yeah. Um, so as I said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything that you would like to plug? Um, just said so we have an album coming out March 22nd on Revelation Rec- Records called This Is All We Ever Get. Um, we're going to the UK at the end of the month. So if there's anybody listening from the UK, we will be there from the 28th until the 6th of April. Um, we're going to be on tour with Shooting Daggers, Clobber, and Uncertainty. All UK HC bands. Check them out if you haven't. They're really awesome. Um, and then that's kind of like all we have planned that hasn't been announced yet Mm -hmm. uh so just follow us on social media spaced underscore hc on instagram and just spaced hc on twitter and then we post everything on there so you should be up to date if you just follow us on social media all right sounds good well thank you for now it's been uh lexi from space and we have been the good noise podcast